Hey everybody, I created a nice little class called UI Binder, and this allows you to create UI with no code at all. And I'm just giving it away. CC0, public domain, do whatever you want with it. It's super handy, and it's kind of a shame that it doesn't exist in Unity by default. So I figure that I'm probably going to end up using it in most of my projects, and you're welcome to use it in most of yours too. What's it do? Well, it allows you to bind any display object to any field on any data object. That sounds complicated, but it's really not. Uh, this text box here is named name. Therefore, it binds to the field named name on the target object. This input field is named name. So it binds to the name. See? Very, very basic. You name the, the, you name the object and it binds to a field of the same name on a target object. This is named start angle, so it binds to the start angle. This is named end angle, so it binds to the end angle. This is named blah, so it binds to a function named blah, a method named blah. You can see it getting called down there. This is named test text, so it binds to this texture. This is named test call, so it binds to this color. You can see how this works, and it's very, very straightforward. So, exactly what else can it do? Well, funny, this room in the scene is specified as having a start angle of 0 and an angle end angle of 90. But when I hit play, that's certainly not the case. Oh, interesting. Almost like it's being saved and loaded from player prefs, which is exactly what's happening. You can optionally save and load these values from player prefs. And that will allow you to create an options menu and anything like that without any difficulty at all. If you want to have your volume control saved and loaded from player prefs, you no longer have to write any code. You just have this and you point it to your volume object, you point it to your, your music player object and you tell it to save and load from player prefs and it does so. So, Let's talk about exactly how you set it up and how it works. You create a parent object and you put this UI binder on it. The UI binder will try and affect all UI objects underneath it. Uh, and what it will do is it will check their names and see whether there's a field or a property or a method of the same name on the target object. So in this case, our target is a room prefab. But you can make it anything. You can target literally anything. Keep in mind that it's targeting a mono behavior. And so if you've got complicated objects with lots of mono behaviors, you may have a hard time picking a specific mono behavior to target. If you do that, if you have that problem, you can always lock one of these inspector panels and create a new inspector panel over here and then select like, uh, like this and you can grab whatever you'd like for as a mono behavior and drop it in, see? So that will allow you to target specific sub-objects and you won't have to, uh, to worry about whether or not it's getting the wrong value from the wrong mono behavior because they happen to have a similar name. Now with that in mind, I'll put it back in the room. There we are. <laughs> There's no way to get proper updates from mono behaviors as far as I can tell as to whether they've been changed. Um, so you have to actually have the refresh each frame if you plan to have a mono behavior's values changing a lot and you want it to be reflected in the display. For example, if it's hit points or something like that, a timer, you would want that to refresh every frame. Otherwise, it will only refresh when you enable this panel. So uh, this, boom, it refreshes, boom, it refreshes. Uh, but refresh every frame is a tiny bit slow. It's not slow enough that you'll notice but if you create like dozens of these and you have hundreds of fields, reflection is not very fast and it does take a little bit of time. This defaults to off, but you can turn it on with just a click. The player prefs prefix is if it's empty, it doesn't save and load from player prefs. But if it has something in here, it saves and loads to player prefs with this prefab and then the name of the object. So when I save start angle, it's going to be called room prefab test start angle. And you can, of course, go and fetch that from player prefs directly if you'd like and write to player prefs using other methods. Uh, disable after start is useful because this has to run in order to load from player prefs. And so therefore, if you're doing something like uh, trying to load up this room with whatever the player has set up before, it's only going to work 
if this panel is on. If the panel isn't on, it doesn't activate, right? So in order to have this panel activate but not spam the player, you can always just click this and it will run, but it will make itself vanish before the first frame. And that's the basics. You just have to make sure that you spell everything correctly. It's going to ignore anything that has a name that doesn't match a field. So if you spell something wrong, it's not going to update and it's just going to not complain or anything because it's going to think that you're just putting in some nice UI glitter because this, you can set this UI up however you want. You can make it look however nice you'd like to make it look. And all it cares about is the names. Because of that, there's going to be a lot of text boxes and fields and panels and images that you're using for, you know, just UI layout stuff. And so it's not going to complain about every single one of those not having a matching name because that would just be a mess. That's the basics. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below and feel free to download it. And I've got it on my uh, itch.io page and the link is down below. It's, it's free. <laughs>